Hey everybody, how's it going? Brian here. Now today I'll be bringing you a quick overview of the Slingbox applications for iOS. Now each application costs $29.99 from the iTunes App Store. These are not universal applications, so if you, if you have an iPad and you get the iPad version of Sling Player, and then if you want to get one for your, iPad, for your iPhone, then you actually have to pay another $30 because these are not universal applications. So you have to pay for each device that you want to use Slingbox with. But considering you're already paying two to three hundred dollars on a sling box, paying another thirty or sixty, you know, just isn't really. It just makes sense to pay a little more money to get the applications, I suppose. So first, I'm going to start with the iPad. I'm just going to quickly go through this version. This is on an iPad too, and you can see how fast the app opened up. Now, when you first open up the application, it's actually going to ask you to sign into your account, and it's going to ask you to agree to the terms of service. And here is the main screen. Here we have a help button, and this will actually open up the Slingbox website, and we'll go to their iPad help page. The directory button will allow you to choose the Slingbox that you'd like to watch. And tapping on one will allow you to launch the guide, or you could watch TV. The guide button will actually load an interactive TV guide, which loads various programming based off of your zip code and uh, television service provider. You switch between your time, then you could tap on a channel and it will actually connect to your sling box and go directly to that channel. The settings button will allow you to change various settings. You could enable various quality settings. You could choose what you want the app to do when you first launch it. You can set what your home channel is, you could sh you can enable the channel up and down gestures, and there are a couple of other options. And the connect button will actually connect to your sling box and it will start playing whatever you are currently watching on your TV through your cable box or satellite box. Now I will be bringing you a full review of the sling box Pro HD at the end of the week, so if some of this stuff isn't of interest to you, it will be once you actually watch my review on the Slingbox. I just wanted to do the iPhone apps first so that when I do my full review of the Slingbox Pro HD, you'll know what I'm talking about when I refer to the iOS apps. So let me change the channel really quick to something different. I don't know anybody who watches the Hallmark movie channel. Not sure why it's even there. But while it's switching to the next channel, uh, at the bottom here, we have some various buttons. And at the top, we have other buttons, and these will actually change what you see at the bottom. So this first one is your standard set of buttons. You could change the quality settings. You could go to the guide. You could go to your favorited channels, which I don't have any at the moment. And you could also disconnect from your Slingbox, change to another device that's currently connected to your Slingbox. I have the Pro HD, Pro HD so I have my cable box connected to the... Uh, sling box via component and you could also change various aspect ratio settings I just leave it on auto detect because when I'm watching a 16 by 9 HD stream I want to see everything even though it doesn't fill my entire screen I like seeing everything from the widescreen stream this next set of buttons will allow you to control your DVR if you have a DVR in your cable box or satellite box or something else and these are the buttons you could use to control it the next set of buttons will give you a couple more uh, DVR options. You could change your channels. You could push the OK and Cancel buttons as if you were actually pushing them on the remote control physically. The next button at the top will bring up this keypad, and from here you could actually change a channel. So if I go to 1300, which is ESPN, it will pause your stream currently and then it will input the commands into your cable box and it will looks like I might have to go to Burger King for that there are a couple of gestures you could swipe up on your screen and that will actually go up one channel as you can see it's currently doing and then swiping down a channel will go down a channel you can see that it doesn't take too too much time to actually connect to the stream again. Let me go to 1511, which is uh, a concert channel. Now, while that's loading, the overall video quality 
using the iOS applications, it's pretty good, especially on the iPad. On the iPhone, it's a little bit different, and I'll actually be showing you this in a couple of minutes. But the reason why I put it on racing most of the time is because not only am I a race fan, but there's a lot of movement going around on the screen. Well, not in this particular shot, but, you know, racing, there's always stuff going on. Cameras are constantly moving. It's not just focused on one person except for that side, or things like that. You know, there's things constantly moving. So it's a, it's a nice way to really see how well the video quality is on the iPad app. There is a good bit of compression. This is using the high quality setting. If I tap on this button, it will switch to uh, uh, standard quality. But the overall video quality on the iPad app is excellent. The audio quality is okay. Um, Sometimes the left and right audio channels will actually play at different times so there will be a little bit of an echoing effect so there's just a little bit of latency issues with both with both of the audio channels not sure if it's a slingbox problem or a uh for or an application problem but uh it is sort of annoying at times but sometimes it's sometimes it's noticeable sometimes it isn't so it just depends on i guess what you're watching and how your slingbox currently feels if that makes any sense. And it's a fun app to use. It lets you view all of your channels from your cable box on your iPad from wherever you are, as long as you have an internet connection. And it's a really cool app. So that is the iPad version of Slingbox. And let me bring my iPhone 4 into view. Now for my for the iPhone version, I'm actually going to use 3G to show you, to show you that this actually works fairly well over your 3G internet connection. So the interface is just like the iPad version. It's pretty much the same. Here's the channel guide that I showed you on the iPad. I mean, the interface is so similar to the iPad version that I don't understand why they didn't just make it a universal application instead of making people charge or pay $30 for each app that they want to use. But I've just shown you most of these things on the iPad, so I'm just going to go ahead and connect and show you that this works fairly well over 3G. At least in my area, AT&T is excellent. I can easily get four, meg four and a half megabits down and about one and a quarter megabits up. So the internet connection going into my iPhone 4 is perfect for Slingbox, considering the maximum bit rate for the high quality setting is about 1200 megabits or 1200 kilobits per second 1200 megabits is a huge amount of bandwidth so you see that is it's playing perfectly um let me make it so this goes away video is smooth it's nice and crisp it, it it's not hd it's not actually at 1280 by 720 being streamed into your iphone but it is at a pretty good resolution and it looks very very nice i am on 3g once again you can see up there and the overall video quality is very nice the audio quality is good as well let me go ahead and show you some of the other things um let me see. If you tap on the remote button, this will actually take you to a similar interface as we saw on the iPad. It's just a little bit different. It's, it's laid out a little bit differently. Uh, here we have the DVR settings. Here we have the D-pad. Here we have a keypad where you can enter in a channel number that you'd like to switch to. And all will take us to some of the other buttons that you can use to control your sling box and your cable box. So all those are in the all button. So I'm going to close that. And overall, using the Slingbox iOS apps, it's a great experience. Um, the apps are a bit expensive at 30 bucks, so you are going to be paying a good bit of money for your entire Slingbox purchase. That was a rather long look at the iOS apps for the Slingbox. Once again, they're each available in the iTunes App Store for $30. So if you have a Slingbox, it's definitely worth the purchase. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave them down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.